And welcome back to the Outsider Sports Show here on the Great American Sports Network. Right now our guest is author Mark Godich. The book is Tigers vs. Jayhawks, From the Civil War to the Battle for Number One. Mark, before we get into specifics, uh, why this book, why this project for you? Well, I've always had a passion for college football, and uh, I just decided it was a topic worth uh, worth looking into because uh, I am a Mizzou grad, and um, I think what we saw happen in that uh, 2007 season will, will never happen again to have two teams uh, being unranked at the start of the year to going to playing for number one in the country so late in the regular season. And it was just uh, throwing the rivalry aspect and all. I just, I just thought it was would be an interesting topic to explore. Well, it absolutely was. Certainly, as a as a fan of the uh, the Missouri Tigers, it took me back uh, to that night and to that day and to the events leading up to it, that season in general. And you do a great job of chronicling that entire 2007 season for both teams. And you know, from a Missouri perspective, uh, I mean, obviously, this was written kind of more from a Mizzou perspective. There was a lot of good details about Mark Mangino and uh, how Kansas got there as well. But when you when you go back to that 07 season, you, know, you talked about both teams being unranked and uh, this collision course towards uh, Arrowhead Stadium. I mean, is it something that like you look back on and you think like, how in the world did that happen? I mean, this is all, it almost, the book had a cinematic almost quality to it where it's, you, it played out like a movie. Like, is it, is it unbelievable? I mean, we're talking about seven years later, what an unbelievable ride it was for both teams. Yeah, without a doubt. Let's not forget that that game in in, uh, in 2006, when everyone looked at the schedule, everyone assumed it was going to be played going to be played in October in uh, in Lawrence. And the fact that uh, they Carl Peterson took uh, spent 15 years trying to get those teams to try to play in Kansas City, and then to have you know to have the game in Kansas City to have so much on the line. Biggest game those two schools will play against each other. Uh, it, it, as Carl said, the stars just aligned. It was just, it was just a, just a perfect, perfect aligning of the stars. Yeah, I go back to it, and as I was reading it, and I've gone back and watched tape of the game since. And, I, and this is sad to say, as such an avid sports fan, but I feel like my quality of life, even seven years later, is better having after having won that game. Had we lost that game, Mark, I don't know that I ever would have emotionally recovered as a as a fan. And you get the sense of that in your book, and you talk about those feelings that both teams had and both coaches had going into it. Everyone knew how big a game it was, and, and I tell everybody this: if if the other side had won, I, I wouldn't have uh, written the book. Uh, I, I like I said, I would argue it's the biggest game those two schools will ever play against each other, uh, assuming they ever do play again. Uh, until they meet in the Final Four, uh, something like that. It, it was just, uh, there was just so much at stake. Uh, Gary Pinkle told me when I sat down with him for the first time, he said, he said, uh, you know, I'm glad we won that game. He, he, he knew how important it was to the alumni and fans and, and all, and, uh, and, and there were players from both teams had said that as great a season as that was, it would have been a disappointment to lose that game. And uh, so there, there was so much on the line, just so much. Yeah, and I think that any Missouri fan uh, needs to read this book because not only does it talk about the 07 season and the 07 game in great detail, it also talks about uh, the Civil War history, which is something I'm very interested in. I think a lot of people are. When you uh, in, in, in researching for that topic, the Civil War aspect, and you talked about the first shots of the Civil War being fired on the Kansas-Missouri border. Do you feel like maybe there's some revisionist Civil War history from the Kansas side of things? Well, without a doubt, everyone everyone points to uh, to the burning of Lawrence in 1863, and as I point out in the book, uh, this fighting had been going on for years and years, and actually two years earlier in Osceola, Kansans came across the border and then burned that town to the ground. And again, that was another reason I wanted to write the book was for people outside of Kansas and Missouri that, that don't that don't really appreciate the, the rivalry as much and don't understand the rivalry. It's it's the only rivalry in the country where where we went from one generation where people to try were trying to kill each other to the next generation of playing football against each other. And you just can't say that about any other rivalry in the country. Uh, you know, there's some great rivalries out there, but this one it was truly unique. Well, I've got to be honest, you know, as Missouri's moved on to the SEC, I, there is not a bigger proponent of that than myself. I think it is wonderful, Missouri, especially with the new SEC network. I mean, just printing money, the facilities are being upgraded. It's great. But after I read this book, Mark, I have to be honest, I had a few moments where I, I as I was reading some of these great details you have in here and talking about the day of the game and the smoke rising from, uh, you know, the, the parking lot at Arrowhead, and it just made, t took me back to that and it made me remember Man, no matter what Missouri does, there will never be a feeling like that going into a game. No matter what, it, it, I was I was in the Georgia Dome playing Auburn, 
for the SEC championship game, Mark, and it did not have the same feeling. I did not have the same anxiety. And, uh, you know, do you agree with that? Do you think that no matter uh, what Missouri does in this new conference, that maybe nothing will ever equal the feeling of that game? Uh, yeah, probably. I mean, I, I think if, if Missouri could ever get to that, get over that last little hurdle and get to that championship game, I think that would be different. Uh, I, I might disagree with you just a little bit. I, I was at the uh, SEC championship game as well. I thought it was it was really electric. Uh, but, you know, there was just, uh, again, there was just so much at stake at, at Arrowhead that night. It was just, uh, I mean, think about it. I'm the, playing for number one in the country. I mean, two yeah. pretty average football programs over the years. And the whole college football world was watching, and the, everyone knew that the winner was going to be one victory from playing for a national championship. It, it was just, it, it just, it's just not going to happen. I, even last year with Missouri and Auburn, you know, neither one of those teams were ranked at the start of the year. But when they when they kicked off in Atlanta, they weren't playing for number one in the country, and there was no guarantee that the winner was going to get, you know, necessarily going to get, at least on Missouri's side, was going to get into a championship game. But everyone knew what was at stake. And the fact that uh, they delivered the kind of game it was made it made it all the more special. Well, it was, and I'll tell you what, it was electric in Atlanta. And I, I was, you know, kind of speaking more personally as, you know, the, the Auburn contingent was so large there, it was not a 50-50 split. And I want, to get, I want to get into that a little bit about the 07 game because everyone's made fun of since, you know, Lou Perkins famously saying that the crowd is going to be 70-30, of course, in favor of Kansas. And you had some really good quotes in there from uh, Chris Fowler about how, you know, that was obviously not the case. How did that, how, how do you think that uh, that misconception got out there and, and uh, you know, was it completely obvious that it was more of a 50-50 deal? Yeah, it was, in fact, uh, I think it was a little more uh, uh, skewed toward, toward the Mizzou side. Uh, I think uh, Lou was uh, taking a lot of heat. Uh, a, he had given up the home game, uh, arguably the well, the biggest game that Kansas will ever play in football. Probably, he gave up the home game for the for money, and no one could really. I don't think anyone could really blame him for doing it when he did it. Lou Perkins didn't know they were going to be 11 and 0, and you know when he when he signed that contract. And I think I think he was taking some heat, and people were saying we ought to be playing this game in Lawrence, and so he was trying to tell people, well, don't worry, it's still going to be, it's going to, you know, we're going to have 70 percent of the fans there, which is going to be like 55 or 56 thousand people, and uh, I think he was just trying to, to calm, ease some fears and all, and uh, uh, he certainly uh, certainly was way off on his prediction. I, I think he just pulled that number right out of the air, which is which is what Tom Keegan from the Lawrence paper told me. Uh, that it was just a just a guess and a you know some wishful thinking on his part, but uh, uh, you know it, it was definitely it was definitely a Mizzou crowd. I've had several people say that that they could definitely sense that it was more of a of a Mizzou pro Mizzou crowd in that stadium that night. Do you feel like that uh, Missouri's win was at all diminished by what happened uh, after that? And you talk about it in the book about, of course, Missouri receiving the Cotton Bowl bid and maybe Lou Perkins of Kansas out shystering Missouri for that Orange Bowl. Uh, and Kansas fans, you know, able to throw out the, hey, what have you ever done? Have you ever won a BCS game? Do you feel like that that has that, that diminishes uh, Missouri's victory at all? I don't think it does in the least. It's uh, you know, this, this whole BCS nonsense is uh, we know it's all about politics and about money. And, and the Orange Bowl made a make an economic decision there. It was all based on money. They thought that Kansas was going to sell more tickets than Missouri did. And in the grand scheme of things, uh, Missouri would have much rather played in the Cotton Bowl in the first place just from a recruiting standpoint. And the fact that uh, Missouri packed that uh, north side of the Cotton Bowl on New Year's Day 2008, I think, spoke volumes to what uh, what kind of fan base Missouri has. Well, had Missouri stayed in the Big 12, there's no doubt that it was a long shot that something like this would have ever happened again. And uh, in the 2011 game, the last time the two ever met on the football field uh, up to this point, uh, there was only... Five or 6,000 uh, Kansas fans in the crowd. There was maybe 50,000 people total in Arrowhead Stadium. So it was likely that that would never hap- have happened again. But as you look at uh, this situation with Missouri still to this day inviting Kansas, that hey, they want to play, Kansas, you know, saying no. Like, who do you – do you put any blame on either side for this occurring, for the fact that the rivalry is not being continued? Well, I think one's pretty clear that one side wants to play and uh... – you know, there's some hard feelings on the other side, and I, everybody's entitled to do as they wish. It's, uh, I, I just, it, it, I think at some point they'll get back together because, as you know, the money always talks, and yeah. someone will at some point will throw some money at uh, that'll make it attractive enough for Kansas to to say it'll be worth their while. But uh, it's it's 
you know, if one side wants to play and the other side doesn't, then who's at fault? I mean, I think it would be the side that doesn't want to play. So yeah, hopefully they'll get it going again in both football and basketball. I think it would be great for Kansas City just to have two great events uh, to look forward to. Absolutely. Well, Mark, I'll tell you what, I absolutely loved the book. I, uh, you know, you talk about in the book growing up and going to games with with your dad, and this reminds me of that exact thing. I grew up going to games with my dad and my dad telling me stories about things like the 1960 game, things that I really <laughs> never wanted to hear about again. It was such a horrible situation in 1960 losing to Kansas. So it really, it really brought me back to that. So I think for a lot of Missouri fans that have that same connection, uh, you know, that you did with your dad, I think that that's one thing that really hits home in this book. Great book, Mark. I cannot tell you how much I enjoyed reading it. Can't wait to pass it on to my dad and let him read it too. So thank you so much for writing it. And thank you so much for coming on today to talk about it. And, uh, you know, good, good luck in the future. I hope uh, that the book does well for you, my man. Well, I appreciate you having me on, Clinton. Uh, uh, very kind of you to do that for me. You bet, Mark. I'll definitely uh, have a review up on the site. Going to definitely do that for you. A good one, of course. Uh, same with Amazon because this is just such a good read. Mark, thank you so much for taking time. And, uh, guys, Mark is a senior editor for Sports Illustrated, so make sure to look him up on Twitter and look the book up on Amazon. Tigers versus Jayhawks from the Civil War to the Battle for Number 1. Mark, thank you so much. Uh, take care. Enjoy the football season, my man. Thanks, Clint. You too. Appreciate it.